It was when I was talking to Lord Sumption last week that we both referred to John Adams, one of the founders of American democracy, who warned that, and I quote, democracy never lasts long. It soon wastes and exhausts itself. There was never a democracy yet that didn't commit suicide, unquote. It's an appropriate analogy to use for the Conservative Party, pardon me, the Conservative Party in Britain. Jake Thrupp is the 25-year-old director of programming here at ADH, but his political instincts are second to none. He's just been in the bowels of the Conservative Party conference in Britain and has only just returned home. The last time we spoke to him from the conference, Jake expressed significant reservations about the capacity of the new Chancellor, Kwasi Kwarteng. Well, after 38 days in office, the Prime Minister Liz Truss has sacked her Chancellor, one of her strongest supporters, Kwasi Kwarteng, because the financial markets were telling the Prime Minister the so-called mini-budget was a disaster. And now legitimate concerns are being asked as to whether Liz Truss herself can survive. In 41 days in office, she's lost her Chancellor, her signature tax cuts, and all authority as British Prime Minister. Some are saying the next to go will be the Prime Minister herself. And if, as the polls suggest, an election were conducted on the basis of the current polling figures, with a very, very ordinary Labor Party, they're up to 33 points ahead of the Conservative Party government. Then the Conservatives would win only 73 seats in the House of Commons out of 650. When a major party could be reduced to such impotence, to quote John Adams, democracy itself may be committing suicide. Jake's jo Jake joins me with his instincts onto all of this. Jake, thank you for your time. I said it was 41 days that Liz Truss has been in office, but 12 of those were during the national mourning period for the Queen when government all but ground to a halt. As one correspondent said, her progression from chocolates to boiled lollies has been swift. <laughs> what were prominent people in the Conservative Party telling you at Birmingham? Well, they're very disillusioned. Uh, thank you for having me on the, the show again, Alan. Um, look, they're very disillusioned. And um, basically, it'll be a miracle if Liz Truss makes it to Christmas. They're already moving against her. Her credibility has been shot because of this. She may as well, they may as well just shred the mini budget. Her first major mistake were her cabinet appointments when she took over, uh, loaded the cabinet with all her own supporters, which has disillusioned people further who supported Rishi Sunak, the, the former chancellor. And you're right now, Kwasi Kwarteng, who was actually one of her allies in the party, uh, along with Coffey, who is the deputy prime minister and health secretary. So now she's isolated Kwarteng, uh, who have, have you, you, you informed me prior to the interview, apparently he found out uh, through the papers that he was being sacked. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, the the London Times rang him when he was on his way to 10 Downing Street to say, you're about to be sacked. He knew nothing about it. So now he's the se so now, so now as a result, he's been humiliated. He's the mm. second shortest serving chancellor in British history. And um, basically he's been sacked for doing what Liz Truss wanted him to do. Because mm. there's reports today that he actually opposed a lot of the measures or, or you know, was strongly against a lot of the measures being proposed in the mini budget. But of course, uh, the prime minister insisted. And when that's the case, you just go along with it. Yes, this is dramatic international mm. stuff. I've got to tell you, this is a massive story. It is Great Britain after all, one of the big powers in the world. So after three weeks of market chaos, soaring interest rates and plummeting poll ratings, her much vaunted growth strategy has no friends, including those sitting around the cabinet table.